Master Nun here. We're back in my garage, and today is the day that we finish the beer. Now, for a lot of people who do home brewing, this would be bottling day. And how we do that is we have our racking cane that you would have seen if you had watched the winemaking videos hooked to a hose that is on this bottle filler. What this has is a little valve in it that when you depress it, it opens up and liquid comes out. And when it gets to the point in the bottle that you want it, you release it and it stops. And after a few, you get pretty good at going in there and going fill, 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 and pulling it out right where you want it to be to end up with beer just going into the neck of your bottle. Um, another thing to talk about at this point is carbonation. There's a few ways to do that because your beer is not carbonated at this point. So, now back when I used to use, when I used to bottle beer, I would just use, I think it's something like an eighth of a teaspoon because you've got to reintroduce some sugar to ferment to force the carbonation. So I'd put that eighth of a teaspoon of sugar in each bottle. Now I know since then they've uh, come up with little tablets, they look like little aspirin that you'd put, priming sugar it's called, that you'd put in each bottle. And I think a lot of people who do it now instead just figure out how much they need for the entire batch and mix that in to their beer at this point and then fill all their bottles and cap them. So now we're gonna show you how the bottle. All right, cap. so you filled up all your bottles and I guess this would be a good time to point out, you can reuse bottles as long as they are not twist off bottles. So anything that you need to use a bottle opener to get it open, you can then reuse for your bottles. Uh, you just have to you know, clean and sanitize them, which you have to do with new bottles anyway. Uh, when you're cleaning them in hot soapy water, you can then also easily peel the labels off. But uh, I found that it's really cheap just to buy bottles for both, and this goes for both beer and wine. So you've got all your bottles filled, and you've got some caps, and these have to be new. You can see, we can get that to focus. You can see it, the edges of it are really flared out. That's because your capper is going to come in and push that on and push those edges down too. And what you do is you just squeeze this on, and as you go, these flanges come on and clamp onto the ridges of the bottle. And there you have it. Your bottle is now capped and ready to go into conditioning. I, I keep a few spare beer cases and you can load up those empty beer cases with your bottles and let them sit. Um, it's been a long time since I bottled beer. I think you uh, bottle condition it for a week unrefrigerated and then a week refrigerated. Uh, but don't quote me on that. As always, you know, read the instructions before you do anything. And if you're an astute observer, you'll notice that I didn't actually fill this with beer or priming sugar. And that's because I don't bottle my beer anymore. Instead, I put it into a keg. So that's what Speaking we're actually of racking gonna canes, do next. If you haven't seen one, this is what I'm talking about. This is actually an auto siphon. A racking cane would look more just like this. And you'd have to, you know, suck on it like when you siphon gasoline to get it going. This has a little o-ring on it. So when you go like this, it automatically starts the siphon. That's why it's called an auto siphon. And this is what we're going to use to transfer our beer from the fermenter down now into the keg. You drop your hose in there and you just give it a gentle pump and that starts it flowing. And right now you can't see, well you can see that the, possibly see that the hose has turned amber colored, but right now the beer is flowing from the fermenter down to the keg. And this is a process that's just going to take, you know, five to ten minutes to do. So we'll be we back have our when beer it's done. transferred from the fermenter into the keg right here, and we have our CO2 cylinder hooked up to the keg. And you can see here, these are your regulators. I only have a line hooked up to this regulator. This particular regulator lets you regulate two kegs at once individually, so it's pretty nice. So this is the 
lid to the keg right here and you kind of gotta finagle that into place and when you when you crank down on this and push down on it really hard it's just a little and push down on it it will seal we're not going to quite do that yet we're going to open the valve on our co2 cylinder that's the main valve but we still don't have any pressure coming through because there's a ball valve right there what you want is some pressure coming in when you go to seal this so you get some co2 coming in fail And that's what happens if you don't have a line on your out. You have a beer fountain right there. So, that's a mess. Um, there we go. No, let's do that. <laughs> All right. While I go and grab my line for that, we'll just pause okay. for a second. That was entertaining for you guys, not so much for me, but we now have our dispensing hose hooked up where it's supposed to be on our other post on the keg. And on the top of the keg here, there's a pair of posts. It's an in post. And they're specific on most setups too. You know, one side is in and the other side of the keg is out. And on this particular one, it's gray in and black out. And any instructions you get with your kegging system will, you know, tell you how to differentiate the two. So now that we are, once it, now that we actually have everything we need, we'll run carbonation into the keg and you know it, it's just barely pushing anything into this line because it doesn't until we go like that and I'm not worried about spilling a little beer at this point because I've already shot off at least a couple beers worth right onto my workbench over there and what we're gonna do is you've got a you've got a PSI down here on the regulator On this gauge right here well yep that's the one on this gauge right here this is for the other one that's not in use and an adjustment knob for pressure right here so I'm going to back that down and as I turn it you can see that needle back off and I back it, I don't want to turn it all the way off. When you serve it, it's going to be served somewhere in the ballpark at 10 PSI. But when you carbonate it, and that's what this does, you overpressurize this keg and you force CO2 into the keg. And that's how you get carbonation when you have stuff kegged. So I'm going to carbonate it at a higher setting and turn it down to... Uh, somewhere around 10 PSI for the final for serving and that takes some adjustment you kind of have to fiddle with it as you progress through the carbonation process and you'll figure out what works best you'll come to a, a carbonation that you really like for your specific beer and a pressure at the end that you like for dispensing it so it's something that is different from beer to beer and sometimes different by taste what some people do and i'll admit that i've done this as well is they'll take this keg now that it, it's under pressure and they'll lay it on the ground and usually you just put your foot on it and just rock it back and forth so the keg is kind of rolling 
That increases the surface area of the beer to the CO2 and it makes this uh, carbonate faster. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to put it in the fridge and I'm just gonna let it sit under pressure and we'll come back in two or three days and finish the video and have a glass of beer. Master Nun here and the uh, beer has been kegged for over a week now. It's actually been kegged for about a week and three days. So I've been drinking on that keg for about a week now. I just didn't have time to film this. So let's do a tasting of the beer to finish off this video. So we're gonna make an attempt to capture a pour here for the video. Uh, I had the pressure on the tank turned quite a bit up for about three days and then I dropped it back down to it's just over 10 pounds or 10 PSI right now and let's pour one. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now let's see what we think of it. All right, so we got the camera back where I'm not crouched down in front of the refrigerator. And you may notice that I had a nice creamy head on top of this that was like an inch tall when you last saw it. And now it's gone. And that's because uh, in between moving the camera from there to here, I managed to break the tripod in true master and unfashion. And it took me a while to get that thing uh, put back together again because I had to completely tear it apart. We're not focused too well. Hopefully this turns out okay. So, the taste test. And another thing, when I made this beer, I thought I was making a cream ale and this is not a cream ale. This is a brown ale. I don't know if I mentioned that in the previous video, but it turned out really nice. Ah, it's good. It's fun to make your own beer. Um, there's something deeply satisfying about it. I especially like having a keg in my fridge of the beer that you made. It's just, it's just very satisfying to walk over to the fridge, open it up, and pour yourself a beer. So, this is the conclusion of our beer making video. Like and subscribe and stand by for more videos. We'll have more coming out every week. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day. You enjoy yours. Thank you for watching. That could be my thumbnail right there.